What are facts about your job, that general public, has no idea about? I'm a massage therapist. I don't care if you didn't shave. But please, wash your feet. And please take a shower, if you're coming from the gym, or any activity, where you were sweating slash dirty. If the lotion I use, turns brown from working on you, you need a shower. Working for giant companies, it's comical, how many systems, are raggedy messes of bare bones functionality. All available money gets thrown at certain projects, leaving everything else to work on complete shoestrings. If Microsoft Excel decided to stop working overnight, the world would practically end. And the times, that someone declares a big enough Excel file a database, that doesn't make it better. X security guard here. We're not there to protect you. We're there, to observe and report. Don't assume that, just because whatever building you're working in has security, that you're safe. Especially if security, is of the unarmed variety. I used to train security guards. I would ask them the following, on day one. What is the main reason companies hire security guards, for their properties? Insurance. It saves money on insurance having a guard on site, specifically for things like, personal liability, water leaks, and fires. I work in IT support. Legit, about 80% of all problems, are solved by rebooting the computer slash terminal slash phone. If not, 20% is pure detective work. Some things that seem simple, are extremely complex to figure out, and things that seem hard, have easy answers. In IT you can get deep in a subject really quick, and get lost in the complexity. I was a licensed cremationist, for 8 years. Regardless how hard we tried, that wasn't just grandma or grandpa, in the urn. I've been single my whole life and plan to be cremated. Nice to know, I finally won't be alone. Not single, still want to be cremated, still like the idea, of an urn buddy. You're making me feel a lot less guilty, about turning dad, into a gemstone. Not just your dad, but also bits from dads, all across the state. This legit made me laugh, we're closing in on the first year of daddy's death, and it makes me sad, especially with Father's Day coming up. But it's hilarious to think, he was in the bag with bits and pieces of other people, since he was not a social creature. Thanks for the laugh, I needed it. Anesthetics. We only ask about your illicit drug use, so we don't kill you when we give you a general anesthetic, and that you have appropriate pain relief. You'll have a tolerance that we need to counter, by giving you a variety of drugs and more of them. No judgment from us on your choices, just want to actually take care of you, properly. Oh my god. When I went in for surgery, my mom was in the room with me, and the doc going over day of procedure when they asked, if I smoked any cannabis. My mom immediately jumps in, no. He would never, and I cut her off. Actually, I'm a daily smoker. Probably not the same effect as opiates, or other drugs use, but for f's sake, let me answer myself, and not get me killed, mom. I currently work the line, at a recycling facility. Y'all mother effers, throw a lot of shit away, when it could have been given to a charity. Conversely, I worked at a second-hand, thrift, store, and mother effers donate a lot of shit, that should have been thrown away. If you donate something to charity, make sure it's actually something someone can use. Your old glass baking pan is something we can resell. Your old toaster that doesn't work, is trash. A toy truck that your child doesn't want, because they're a teenager now, is fine. The old stuffed animal, that is missing a head, is trash. A shirt that was a gift, but the wrong color for you, is something that can be sold. Your left shoe, that doesn't have a matching right shoe, is trash. Got lots of comments about the shoe. Sorry. Don't give us, your old, soiled underwear. The bags of cement are not filled by a robot. A person handles every bag. I can fill 2,500 bags in an 8-hour shift. So, they are filled by a machine, you beast. You are the machine bro. That's cool, but I have to ask, why not? Wouldn't it be more cost effective to do it with machine? Not to put you out if a job or anything, just curious. It varies on the plant you work at. Currently employed for a large concrete manufacturer, and we have a fully automated bagging system. All bags are filled with a machine. I operate a bagging machine. I could never be able to fill bags by hand, or with a shovel. That being said, it's cheaper to hire people to do that job, than to buy a completely automated system. I work for a department, that does tolls, by mail. A robot may take your picture, but a live human ends up processing it. We can see inside your car, 
and we can see you giving, road head, even in the dark tunnels. Ah, so, when I got a dozen tolls in the mail last year, each with a clear photograph of my truck on the back of a car carrier, an actual human being looked at the photo of my truck on the trailer and said, yeah, I'ma send the toll bill, to the pickup truck's owner. I work in a large biotech slash pharmaceutical manufacturing company. The drugs you take or buy, from your local pharmacy, are so insanely and meticulously regulated and inspected at every step of the journey, from petri dish, to pharmacy shelf, that you could take a pill from a bottle and it can be traced back to the exact room it was made in, the exact equipment that was used, who was responsible for each step, and the time it was made, down to the very second. Seriously, there is no missteps, when it comes to GXP. In news writing, if we like you, we don't quote you exactly. If we don't like you, best believe you're getting, a sick. This is pretty hilarious. I'm going to think everyone with a, sick, is in a hole, now. I'm always amazed when I see along quotes in English tabloids, usually in those stories that seem to be BS already, that kind of, I married my daughter-in-law, and my son was my best man, nonsense. But the obvious giveaway, that these stories are fake, or at least wildly exaggerated, are the long, multi-sentence quotes, that somehow exactly distill the essence of the story. Most people aren't that eloquent. We speak in fragments. We stop, and change how we express our thoughts mid-sentence. If you read a verbatim transcript of a conversation, it's often incoherent. Accurate quotes and news stories are often short, because it's rare that most folks, who aren't prepared spokespeople, express themselves clearly for very long. ER nurse. People get seen by severity, not the order they came in the door. Also, just because you came in by ambulance, doesn't mean you immediately bypass the waiting room. When you call 911, please say your address before anything else. It doesn't matter if someone is actively dying, say your address first. I'm from a rural area, so this might just be a problem where I'm from. But if you're calling on a cell phone sometimes, it can ping in a completely different spot than you are. If you call and don't say where you are, and we get disconnected, I might not have any clue where to send rescue slash police slash fire, and therefore I cannot help you. Say your address, if you don't know, then please give like a cross street or notable location, first, then preferably your name, then tell me what's going on. A lot of people assume that we automatically have a precise location where they're at, and the systems can be pretty accurate, but you can't always rely on them. If you say the address and we get disconnected, I can at least send someone to the area to figure out what needs to be done. Source, I am a 911 dispatcher, and I have so many people scream at me for not automatically knowing their location. Software developer here. Only a minority of companies take data security seriously enough to prevent leaks. For every publicly announced leak, there are 20 that were swept under the rug. Proper security requires that the whole structure, from the top down, has an understanding of the issues. It's not just down to the techies, it's down to their managers, and their managers' managers. This is because, most hacks are not what you see on CSI. It's some dude scamming an HR employee, for their credentials, and logging in, using said credentials. It's human error, not hacker man, that you should be worried about. Public Defender. I don't do this, because it's the only job I could get. I do it, because I'm passionately invested, in making sure poor people, have access to the courts, and because without us, there would be absolutely nothing, between them and the awesome power of the government. The vast majority of us are there, for the same reason. The perception that we are not as good as private attorneys is just wrong. In fact, most PDs have done many more trials than privates, because we have many more clients. The difference is, that we can't pick and choose our clients, as private attorneys can. We have to work with what we get, so, our win-slash-loss ratio isn't as impressive as theirs. Ask a private defense attorney, what they think of public defenders, most will tell you, that some of the best attorneys they've known are PDs. While we can't take the time to hold your hand, and take every one of your calls, we actually do care about you and your case. I work nights. I work weekends. In fact, every weekend I'm at the jail, seeing my guys, because I don't have time during the week. We are excellent attorneys, who chose public service. Structural engineer. We take materials, we do not entirely understand, form them into shapes, we cannot precisely analyze to resist forces, we cannot truly assess, in such a way that the public at large, has no idea of the extent of our ignorance. Safety factor, times 20. 
I have a PhD in metallurgy. I concurred, that we don't really understand almost all materials. We have a good grasp, of most of the materials, we've been using a while, in the conditions we have used them. However, if you want to put a new alloy in a power plant, or nuclear reactor, you're looking at several decades of testing, by hundreds of people. As someone in construction, statistically speaking, I have a bigger chance of dying on the job than police officers do, in their line of work. It was even more dangerous, when I did scaffolding at an oil refinery. I think people abstractly know construction is dangerous, but sometimes, you have to put it in perspective for them. Have you heard of the Manila film, Festival Tragedy, wherein 169 workers fell from a scaffolding in 1981? But the current first lady was in a hurry to finish the building, so it was decided to build over the bodies. No ambulance, a rescue was also ordered, for nine hours, irk. The dictator's family were ousted, and fled the Philippines, and faced numerous cases. Plot twist, three decades later, the son is now the elected president of the country. How f up is that? Philippines. Healthcare worker, part of the reason your doctor's appointments are so quick is, the amount of documenting we have to do, so we get paid. We can be the most brilliant clinician and save your damn life, but if we don't write a note, that's complete enough, or have the right elements, your insurance company will pay less. We get nothing, for being smart, correct, or compassionate. Only what we, can document, and takes time away from you. Bridge Carpenter. When you drive by six people standing around, one guy working, the group is usually comprised, of inspectors, superintendents, subs, engineers, and foremen all standing around a laborer, to talk. You can differentiate by the hard hats, and how clean they are. If you want to get upset at someone, for your commute being slowed, don't pick the dirty guys. Copy slash print industry. I have signed a lot of NDAs, and copied slash scanned many jobs, that I wasn't allowed, to look at. Medical documents, documents for lawsuits and such, and helped a few people, with patent application. Had a few print jobs, the guy had to sit there, the whole time. No one was allowed to look at the printouts. Had to show him, how to take the prints out of the copier, and make sure, no customers came back by the copier. I couldn't copy the files, if the DVD, and had to sign a document. No copies of those documents, physical or digitally, were kept by my company. I think the guy was a defense contractor, so, that was interesting. Also, the pulp to make paper, mostly comes trees specifically grown for making paper. The rest comes from leftovers from the lumber industry. Recycling paper into reusable white paper is way worse for the environment, than making new paper. Making brown paper goods from recycled paper, isn't so bad, but still not great. Most fossils in museums, are plastic replicas. Not always the whole thing, but any full dinosaur you see, more than likely, has at least some plastic components. There's only a handful of businesses in the world, that make the replicas, and at least in the US, they're pretty small operations. I work with the developmentally disabled. While we are allowed to encourage our clients, to make good choices, and try to talk them out of making bad ones, we are not allowed to stop them, from doing what they want. They are people first, and everyone is allowed to make poor choices, and suffer the consequences. The United States government, calls it, the right to consequences. I'm a supervisor at a home health company. I may actually have the easiest job in the entire world, and I get paid decently for it, too. Because of Medicare slash Medicaid regulations, the company has to send a supervisor out, to all the homes our employees go to, so we can make sure things are going well, and the client is being taken care of well. My time is spent, either driving to someone's home, and asking them maybe 15 questions about their care, or sitting in the office, doing paperwork about those questions. That's it. That's all I do. People don't realize, how much work goes into making boxes, or binders, for products. Huge machines are used, tens of thousands are made in the matter of days. I have made the same binder, about 70,000 times roughly, in the 6 months, since I started on the job. If you receive a box with your product, and it's still in good shape, consider reusing it for something. As a production operative, I know how much anger and frustration goes into making a simple box. Honestly you wouldn't think it's that hard. But when one box goes wrong, every single box following, does too. It's hard work, for a job that should be simple. I'll share a few different facts from my experiences. Most fast food is kept around much longer than it is supposed to be. 
bacon from the previous night, will be reheated, and used the following day. Anything that's heated, and not a burger or fried good, is microwaved. Grills and fryers aren't cleaned as well, as they should be. If you want to check quality on furniture, look underneath. Most places won't clean the underneath of their furniture. If there's a lot of excess glue or chipped slash scratch slash dented parts, the manufacturer cares about quantity over quality. Good quality furniture, will last forever. Bulletproof helmets have very little QC done to them, other than ensuring they will stop a bullet, and even then, it can be hit or miss, depending on the thickness and quality of the material used to create the helmet. Some helmets were born from styles, that were created for a contract that was terminated before completion. For example, we have 1000 helmets, that the customer no longer wants, what should we do? Shape them a little differently, and call them a new type of helmet. That is a trucker, that space I left in front of me is, so I don't kill anybody, not your personal invitation to jump in front of my bumper, because you forgot your exit, or whatever reason. So many want to get in front of us, and slow down, and park in front my bumper. YSK, don't believe the billboards, those ambulance chasing lawyers, put up about big truck accidents, mean big bucks. Only survivors get money, most likely not you. If you do survive, more than likely, your quality of life, is going to be miserable. Also YSK, these trucks can weigh up to 80,000 pounds, 34,000 pounds empty, and around 20,000 pounds without the trailer. How does that compare to your SUV, or even your lifted pickup? Do us all a favor, and give us some space, leave us room, so that you can live, and go home to your family. One final thought, never assume, the other driver sees you. Martial Arts Slash Self-Defense Instructor Women's self-defense, is a waste of time. Unless you're taking real classes regularly, that seminar you took, that taught you what to do, if a man tries to kidnap you, is really only good for getting away momentarily. I know it's not necessarily the point, but you'll never fully stop an attacker with anything we can show you in an hour. If you can, take a normal martial arts class. No reason, that what works for the men, won't work for you. Edit, boxing and MMA are also martial arts. Pretty useful on the streets. Government worker here. You know how you all have the opinion that government departments are massive bureaucracies, that take forever to get anything done efficiently, if at all? It's true. And we hate that, too. It can take me two months, to get an answer, that would normally take one day, in the private sector. I have worked for the US federal government. Every time Congress waits until the 11th hour, to pass a budget, or a continuing resolution, a temporary budget, the government spends an unknown amount of money probably millions of dollars, preparing for a government shutdown, whether the shutdown happens, or not. If the government actually shuts down, even if only for a few hours, it wastes millions more tax dollars. Taxpayers get no benefit from these expenditures, and the money is simply wasted. When Congress holds the budget hostage, they're not actually hurting political rivals. They're punishing taxpayers, and anyone who relies on government services directly, or indirectly, for anything. Edit. One more thought. If your representative or senator engages in this, vote them out at the next election, because they're burning your tax dollars, to deceive you, into supporting their careers. You get nothing, your tax dollars are thrown in the trash, and a bunch of stupid rubes, get duped into voting, to keep a do-nothing politician in office, earning six figures. US-based flight attendant here. Unless you're flying on Delta, your flight attendants, aren't getting paid during boarding and deplaning. We're just as annoyed as the next person, that the flight is delayed, because of a mechanical issue, weather, etc. If the boarding door is closed, we, usually, don't mind though. Paramedic here. Me and a shocking amount of my medic friends, learned, vital life-saving skills, off of YouTube. The schooling just isn't always what it should be, and often we are left on our own, to figure things out, while we are learning. More often than not, that leads to YouTube video tutorials, they have one for everything, so, more frequently than you'd think, people are learning how to give needles and read DCGs, from the same place we all learn, what the proper time to hard boil an egg, is. Retail worker, if the store does not have something, because the product got shorted, that is not our fault. We can't tell you why it got shorted, because we don't know ourselves, so, don't get pissy with us. We don't gain anything from lying to you. I work in a freezer warehouse, that ships things directly to shops. Most of the time, we short something, is because idiot forklift drivers, puts away pallets without scanning, 
and we can't find them in time. I was forklift driver myself for over 12 years, I'm surprised, how food industry has worst of them all. I work in a financial aid office, at a college. We try to give students as much money as we can, but we are very limited in what we can do. The federal government is extremely strict, with what they will give to students through FAFSA, state grants are not a lot of money, and are hard to qualify for, and donors tend to be extremely specific, with their requirements, for who should get the scholarship they are funding. Also, FAFSA is controlled by the federal government, not your institution. I work for a Scottish council. We provide hospital beds, and wheelchairs, and stuff like that, to people's houses, so they can get out of hospital and pick them up, when they are finished using them. Because there is only a certain amount of pickups you can do in one van, they come back when the van is full. The system doesn't let you make any more pickups for that day, unless emergency, so, one van load, and the job is done. They don't get unloaded until 14-15, so, they don't go home too early, but they sit there for 1 hour 30 minutes waiting to get unloaded. They are supposed to work a 35 hours week, but you are lucky if they do 25. One of the biggest councils in Scotland, providing end-of-life service, and they are literally paying people to do F all, while there is a three-month waiting list, for deliveries and uplifts. Managers know all about it. They put this system in place. I'm an electrician. An industrial electrician. I cannot rewire your home. LOL, there's a whole set of local rules, and best practices, I know nothing of. You have a PLC cabinet, or 480V motor, you need wired, I'm your man. Call a professional, to wire your garage. I'm an electrician. For entertainment. You need to troubleshoot a moving light, hang and focus a conventional, or even figure out why, a cable isn't passing power? I got you. You need feeder run from a 480V Jenny, through a step down transformer, and into the venue? Been there, ran that quarter mile of 40. But wiring a house up to code, is a whole other ball game. I may be the master electrician on a gig, but that's because I know my venue, and what power I have, where to get you the circuits you need, for a show. That doesn't mean, I have a residential license. Stop. Asking.